Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome this evening uh, to uh, Brighton High School for us taking this opportunity to celebrate the accomplishments of our very own Tyrone Perry. Um, first, I would like to give thanks to God um, for giving us uh, this opportunity to be here today, tonight, with each other. Also, for this a great opportunity that I've had uh, myself, Coach Kurt, over the past nine years of taking Brighton High School, uh, the basketball program, um, from a very humble beginning. Um, my, my time in the BPS from uh, when I started high school in 1993 at Charleston High School, when we used to play um, Brighton High School, we used, to, we used to beat them all the time. Um, then when I graduated college, I came back and my first coaching job was at Charleston High School, where we used to beat Brighton all the time. Um, so Brighton did not have a winning tradition. Um, I never thought that I would end up as a head coach at Brighton. That was not the plan. That wasn't my personal plan. But this is the reason why I give thanks to God, because um, at the end of my, my last year at Charlestown High School, um, the coaching staff sort of dispersed. I thought I would be the next person in line at Charlestown High School, but God had it where I accepted a teaching job here in the building, and um, the headmaster asked me if I would be the assistant coach to the gentleman who was coaching. And at that time, when I walked in the building, all of the teachers said, um, the basketball team, uh, they're the worst kids in the school, they have a bad reputation, um, they don't go to class, like all these negative things. And I said to myself, if this was under the current coach, I didn't necessarily want to be an assistant. Um, I had learned from a very, very great coach at Charlestown um, who, had a, a structure that I said, if, if I'm going to do this, I'd like to do it my way, what I feel was like the right way. And I humbly uh, declined being the assistant, but I did say, if you want to hire me as a head coach, I will accept. And um, God had it. I, um, I was offered the position, and so it began. Um, and so my vision for where we're at today, this is um, it's, it's a blur. So happened so fast, you know, meeting him um, and seeing him play. I really only got a chance to really see Ty because I know Kurt and Chill and Seize and Royce, they, they grew up with you, they've seen you since you were younger. But me as a coach, I only saw you when you was in middle school at the championship and I, and I saw you as a basketball player. Um, and so for me, the, the vision for me at the time was as a young male of color in the inner city of Boston, a Boston public school kid, um, many of us go through a lot of trials and tribulations at home. I did not have a role model for college. I did not have a role model um, even to be like a great dad or a mentor. Um, those, I didn't have those in my immediate household. It was people outside of my household who took a vested interest in me as a young person to help me to be, become a good person in life and, and, and allow myself to have a better life. Um, meeting my basketball coach, he instilled in me uh, discipline, work ethic, and he exposed me to college for the first time. And it was me going to a small school in Maine called Bowdoin College. Um, it was a very tough academic school. And that mixed with the fact that as a basketball player, um, I worked really hard. And, and this is what Ty reminds me of myself in so many ways. Like, I was determined. I wanted to get better. I wanted to use it um, to fulfill my passion, but also allow it to take me wherever, wherever God saw it fit to take me. And so being in college and having to be a student athlete is what changed my entire perception about basketball and playing on a team. And what playing on a team the right way for the right reasons could do for me. 
And that is when I decided when I was going to come back to Boston and to be a teacher and a coach, I was going to run my program in that way. And so sitting here today, and we're very blessed to have some of our alums. Uh, we have Davon Edwards back here. Um, Davon, uh, you know, was our first thousand point scorer. Um, and he is graduating in May from Newberry College with his degree. We have um, Jason Jones, who Jason played with Davon, and Jason is currently um, finishing up his junior year at New England College. Um, he's doing well in the classroom. Um, and he led him, as well as another one of our gentlemen who I'll mention, they have led their school to their first uh, conference championship and in college, and they played in the NCAA tournament, and um, they're just doing amazing things. But that leads me to Mr. Isaiah Winston Brooks, <laughs> who graduated from Brighton, um, and he went on to New England College as well, and they're doing amazing things. And, you know, so to see um, what I, why I was doing what I wanted to do come to life, um, it's just amazing to go from the legacy there to, to even here with Ty today. And um, so when we talk about that part, that's just what means the most to me. It means the fact that we have three core values in our program. Number one, be a godly person be a good person not just to me because i'm the basketball coach and you can play but to your teammates to your teachers to strangers to your family be a good person if you're a good person you we all know right we've learned in life people would want to help you if you're not that smart they'll tutor you you know if you're a good person if you're not that good in basketball they'll train you if you're a good person like people will go on a, out on a limb for you if you're a good person. So that opens up the doors. Number two, be a great student. Put your time and energy and your focus into your academic. That's your brain. That's, that's what's going to open up more doors in life for you than your athletic abilities will ever do for you. And so it's number two, it's um, academics. And then number three, it's the basketball. If Many of you say that this is your passion, this is what you want to do with your life, um, and you know that you can use this as your tool, then put forth 100% effort in it. And if you put those three things together, that's why I feel like I was able to accomplish what I had in my life. And when I look at our alumni, and now I look at where Ty is sitting before us, this is what it can do for you. And so this is what I'm most proud of, proud of that it started off with just the thought, like if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it this way because I wanna get these results. And here we are nine years later, and I'm very proud of the results that we've been able to accomplish. So that's my piece. Now, the other major piece that brings us here obviously has to do with the basketball and doing basketball really well. And I'm more of the life coach. If we really didn't win a lot of games, oh well, I want these young men to develop. But this is why God said, I gotta send you somebody. I gotta send you a guy that has this passion, this deep-rooted passion for basketball and for like really taking that to the next level. And his number one goal is always, can we get these young men scholarships? Can we get them to school for free? And that's where Coach Kirk comes in. Thank you. Like Coach Coleman said, this journey has went by very, very fast. And um, Ty, we're extremely proud of you. Um, I remember at the end of your junior year, we had a season review at your house with your mom, your brother, your sister, where we watched game film and we talked about everything that we went through for the first three years. We talked about your goals and what you wanted to do. Um, at the end of it, we watched the film. We said, Ty, 
It's the same thing we said to you as a freshman. You have the potential to be a Division One player. But right now, after we watch this, where we are right now, that's not where you're at. There's things that you need to work on, things that you have to correct on the court, you know, your emotions and stuff like that when you're playing the game because you're a passionate person. You had the goals of you decided to come back because you could have, you know, went prep school before. And you had the goals of reaching this goal of being a Division One player or a Division Two player, scoring a thousand points, winning the state championship. Um, fast forward to today, you are now a Division One player, right? You did everything that you needed to do to get the results that you wanted. Uh, when you listen to, you know, famous people, you know, musician, actors, CEOs, they always talk about, you know, this is your passion, this is what you want to do. You got to risk it all and bet on yourself. You know, when you graduated, you scored your 1,000. You won your state championship that you led us to. You won your second city championship. And um, you had Division II scholarships, offers on the table. But that's not what you wanted. Your goal was to be a Division I player, all right? And you bet on yourself. You risked everything. You didn't care what your mom, your brother, me, Coach Coleman said. You wanted to do it your way. And because you wanted to do it your way, you bet on yourself. We are now here today. You have a scholarship, and you are chasing your dreams. So congratulations. Keep it up. All right? All right, first off, um, my name is Royce, and I've known Ty since he was two or three years old. And the reason I've known him that long is because his brother Calvin, um, we actually went to school together, and we've known each other since the seventh grade. Um, from the first time that I met Calvin, like, we instantly just clicked and we became best friends right away. The crazy thing about it, we were the type of friends that would compete about who could get the better grade in class. And that's how we competed. Like, I'm gonna have the best grades, and then we took it to the basketball court, it was, it was okay. I'm gonna be the best defender. Okay, I'm gonna stop you every single time. And that's how we challenge yourself, challenge each other. Um, throughout me and Calvin's relationship, I became real close to the family. So I look at his mother as my mother, I look at his grandmother as my grandmother, sister as my sister. Um, aunts as my aunts and uncles as my uncles. That's how tight our relationship is and how it's gonna continue to be. With that being said, again, I've had the opportunity to watch Tyrone grow. And with him being the baby brother, that's exactly how I treated him, as if he was the baby brother. So therefore, the competition was always there, was always there. Um, he always felt like he was better than me, even though he's so many years younger than me. He would always say to me, oh, I'm gonna cross you, I'm gonna dunk on you, I'm gonna do this. And that's how it was ever since he was little. He was always determined, hardworking, and dedicated. He didn't let anything stop him. Um, he's one of the hardest working kids that I know. And that's why you have the results that you have today to be a Division One athlete. That's why you earned yourself a scholarship because of your work ethic. Not only on the basketball court, but in the classroom. Again, me and Calvin competed with grades. And it's funny because Tyrone competes with himself to say, hey, I'm gonna get straight A's every single time. I'm gonna be an honorable student every single time. So I just love the fact that he's grown to be the young man that he is. Um, and I'm grateful to be a part of, you know, the Perry Davis family. And good luck with everything on your journey as you continue to go on. Again, if you want to play one-on-one, -on -one, that's still on the table. We can still get that. Um, and again, congratulations. What's going on, everybody? Um, how you guys doing? Thanks for coming out. Um, I'm Calvin Davis. Um, I'm Tyrone's older brother. Um, I call him Little Big Bro. <laughs> um, as Roy said, uh, I've known Roy for a while, so thank you, Roy, for speaking. And I think you know you and Kurt as well. Um, wow, where can I start? <laughs> um, like I said, Little Big Bro. Uh, there's a picture that my mom has, and Tyrone's actually on my shoulders when he was about 
six years old. Um, and I was just looking at that the other night, and I was just laughing, like, wow, we're really here. Um, I guess I want to say, at least I was younger. The first time we touched the basketball, we was at English High School, and uh, me and my classmates, we joke about it all the time. It was like, when's this little white kid going to keep running on the court? Somebody get him, somebody get him. Um, and that was the first time, you know, I, I kind of knew how the basketball was lit. But it wasn't, he didn't, he, didn't he didn't spike like everybody else, as I could say, you know, until I was 13, you know, I could see him, you know, with being BL and, and things like that, he would just one day find the baseline, you know, and I'm just like, oh my God, play defense, grab the rebound, do something, you know? And um, I remember having this conversation with you, and I said after that game, I said, is basketball really what you want to do? I said, because if it's not, it's okay. We can find something else, but you can see your mom out there. Is, it, is this something that you, you remember that? And um, he's like, nah, bro, this is it, this is it, this is it. And fast forward a little bit forward, you know, grades became a problem, seventh grade year, you know, and that's when my mom shut it all the way down. Didn't even play ball in seventh grade year, shut it all the way down. Ever since then, he became my hero at eighth grade. I'm not gonna lie to you, I was shocked because from eighth grade on, Todd may have got maybe one, two keys, and that's incredible. You know what I mean? Because he led that, that 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 led him in that led me to to him to you know Kurt and you um, that led him to some AAU um, and with that being said with AAU that wasn't always a good option as well because he got a lot of no's and oh you're not as good enough right now um, try next year or you can play with us for right now but you may have to play on the B team. Um, Ty had a chance to say no. Ty had the opportunity to say you know what. Child to say to me, I'm going to get a job, which was cool. You know what I mean? Because that's the road I took at 17. I got a job. I started working. So for him to say, you know what, child? Bro, this is what I want. This is what I want to do. I'm like, okay, Ty, invest in yourself. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, I can want what's for you, but I can't make your heart beat for you. That's what you have to do on your own. And that's what he did. And I think, you know, people like Royce, Coach Q, uh, Coach Kurt, Chill, um, Zach, you know what I mean? I think guys like that, and as he gets older and he starts, you know, reaching out to other guys, um, you know, uh, I just think that it's important for, for Ty to understand that what he's at, he did because of the help of his family, but also because of what he did, which was through his hard work and the effort that he put in every single day. And um, I'm just so proud as a brother, um, like Royce said to you, I won't play in one on one because, you know, I'm not. That's not my thing anymore, you know. But at the end of the day, I just think that he's going to continue to do great things. Um, I think people who come into his life now as he gets older, um, like Paris, for example, and that dance, you know, and Destiny is for you, and I thank you. Um, and, I, and, and that's another thing. We reach out to guys who can still help, you know what I mean, and still can mentor to our young men in the community. That's what it's all about, is reaching out and giving back. And I just think everyone that came out, I think, Rome, and I'm so happy that you're able to um, see your dream come alive because at the end of the day, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Tyrone. You know what I'm saying? We wouldn't be sitting here if he didn't say, you know what, Kyle, I'm going to go to the gym, not just in the morning, but in the evening before 9.30, before it closes. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, oh my God, you're going to be two again. You know, I got mom got to pick you up, I got to pick you up. Somebody got to get you. So it, 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 it was really that he really wanted this thing, and, I, and I'm proud of you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because you really did it your way. Um, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Martin, for all you. And it's been great, bro. Wow. God be the glory. God is so good. And I know that he is good. And he has been good. From my heart, I just want to thank all of you that are here today. Um, 
my mom for your undying support, my backbone through it all, um, my sisters, my daughter, and her husband for everything. Things that I couldn't do, she did. For my son Calvin, your own sacrifices you laid down, not just for me, but for your brother, and I thank you. To my pastor, when I was weary, they didn't let me fall, you encouraged me, you never let me quit, you never let me doubt, my church family that stepped in when I didn't know how it was going to be done. To my friends, my best friend, I thank you. To all of his trainers, to his coaches, I trusted you with my son, and you did well. I thank you. I thank you for being the men that stepped in and shaped him into who he is today. I thank you, all of his trainers, his pastor Grady slash uncle. I thank you. I thank you for his uncles that are here, how you poured into him, only how he could understand. I thank you. I could not have done it without you. And I thank you. My heart is so overwhelmed. I've been waiting for this day a long time because it was his dream. When he was little, I used to tell him about the story of David and Goliath and how there was nothing too big that you couldn't do. They said you had this and they said you had that and you were named this and you were named that, but I pleaded the blood of Jesus. And I said, if you put your mind to it, you can do anything you want to do. The story of David and Goliath carries us a long way, even all the way to Woodstock. He always remembered that he could be bigger than any giant that faced him. So when you see the passion and when you see the, the facial expressions, all those things that we were trying to reel in, some of those things were things that I built up in him because people say the odds are against our black males, but it's not true. It's not true. Because of you, and because of my family, and because of the support and love that you have shown him and you have given to us, he is who he is today. His friends, his selected friends, I thank you and I appreciate you. I love my children, I love my children with all my heart. Tori is my heart, Tyrone, Calvin is my treasure, and Tyrone is my love. And they're tired of me talking, but I don't care. Because God is good. Because the pickups and the drop-offs and the sacrifices and the... <laughs> but it's okay. All of those things are okay because they're well today. I think... Brighton High School and Woodstock Academy, I thank them for what they have done for him. But ultimately, Tyrone has been through a lot. He has, he has had a lot of no's. And he has, he has heard that he wasn't good enough just because. Well, today I say he is good enough. And he's mine, amen? And he has made it. And I am so proud, so proud, so proud, so proud, so proud that he made the choices and we followed his dream. And for that, I will forever be grateful. 
to God who helped me along the way. I don't think there's anybody else that I can thank, but I love you guys and I so appreciate you being here. I pray that now that we've had a year away from each other, we have about four more weeks and I'm sure that thing says he can't wait. But it's okay. It's okay, because you know, late in the midnight hour, the only one that's going to answer the phone is mama. Amen? And okay, there goes a smile. Okay, late in the midnight hour, mama's going to be the only one to answer. And so I'm so proud of you, Ty. I pray that as you go to New York and you see the big light, that you know you remember those that you're carrying, that you remember those that put their faith in you, that you remember those that poured into you and make us proud. I love you. Oh. First, I want to thank God for letting me uh, have this opportunity to show people that dreams do come true if you really put your heart into it. And um, uh, so, first, I want to thank uh, well, well, uh, is my middle school coach in here right now. But well, I want to thank him. He already knows. But first, I want to thank Brian. Um, well, so coming in as a freshman, I uh, I really didn't know like what this school was because this school was like pretty big. So. Um, so I was just like, all right, so I'm gonna just come here. I'm gonna play on the team, uh, so see if I can make the team, and um, you know, and work hard until then. And um, oh, what's up? Uh, and well, um, all right. Well, so come in. Uh, well, uh, it was just a long journey, you know. Um. Well, so coming here at uh, five in the mornings, you know. I'm good. Uh, well, so waking up uh, at five in the morning was really hard, but um, but like my main goal was it just wasn't like to go Division One. Well, like that's what I really told people that like my goal was. Um, but like my real goal was like. So my real goal was um, was to help my mom out. Um, I'm sorry. Every day, uh, um, to see my mom, I'm um, to wake up at six in the morning. It really like. It really like hurting me because um because like my main goal was like tell my mom I was not work no more and um and the only way that I could do that was was to work hard on the, on the court and off the court and um and and giving back uh to, to my mom was um uh, was like a big accomplishment. It really wasn't to go to Division One, but that was was. Uh, but that was like my main goal because because like every basketball player wanted to go to Division One, but but like but like help my mom out 
and making sure that she don't work no more in a few years was my main goal. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, um, and I also want to thank Brian for giving me the opportunity. Um, well, and, and I also want to thank Zach. Uh, thank you, Zach, for everything, you know. And I also want to thank um, so Huey and Zach and um, um, Coach Kerr for helping me uh, to do everything. And, um, and thank you, Paris, for coming into my life. You know. Thank you for everything, and, uh, and thank you, Royce and Caesar, for helping me too. Um, so growing up wasn't easy, but I um, mean, um, because like I kind of like um always had an attitude with me, but but that like really helped. Well, but I think that helped me on the court um, a little bit. Uh, but um, and then after my four years here. I want to thank my Woodstock boys. Um, um, so like the days that I was down and like the days where um, uh, the days where like I really don't want to talk to people and like Like the days where I wanted to quit on basketball, um, those two boys right there, um, really, uh, um, um, the, those two boys over there, um, really, um, helped me out a lot. church family too, like my pastors and and my aunts for um um for praying over me um, every day and um and giving me late night calls um so when I didn't expect it. Um and um uh, so thank you for my uh second mom story. Thank you for everything. When uh, Jamal had to work, um, you babysitted me <laughs> when I was younger. Uh, so thank you, Jason, for everything too, um, for coming to my sister's life. And um, for help, helping me out, and giving me ride uh, so to the gym also, you know? And, um, yeah, you already know, Jay. You know how we go, bro. Yeah. Uh, so thank you, Nana, for everything, you know. Um, yo, this is tough. Um, you know, for all the Brighton boys out there, yo, Yo, keep working, bro. Oh, thank you, Calvin, too, y'all. You know, thank you, bro. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I forgot about my bro, and I, I can't, can't forget about him. Yo, yo but thank you. Yo, yo, I'm uh, for my Brighton boys. Yo, keep working, yo. Tell you. Tell you. Yo, so dreams do come true when you really uh, put your mind into it. Keep working. Keep working. In the gym every day. Even if you're tired, every day. Trust me. Trust me. Keep working. Thank you.
So as you see, this is a very emotional moment. This is why Mama said, write your speech. But my son did a wonderful job, and you can tell that he has so much love for all of you. Um, but we do not want to forget Mr. Ventura, who has followed Kai's career since he was in the eighth grade. And we so appreciate you and your family and all that you have done. Uh, all of the coverage that you see in the Herald, uh, he has done it all for Kai. Even when he was named uh, all scholastics athlete, Dave and Tor was right there. And so we appreciate everything that you have done for us and we love you. I am also take the opportunity to um, give a special thanks to Pat Flaherty and BNN. Um, uh, BNN covers um, the basketball games, uh, games of the week. And I think Ty has been player of the game many times um, in his career. So uh, we thank them for coming out as well. Uh, I'm going to give it over to Coach Kirk. Now it's time for what we've all been waiting for, is to see Ty's sign. And if everybody can start smiling, because now you try to make everybody tear up. So Ty's going to sign his name on the data line and then pass it on to his mom. Seven seventeen PM. Two thousand seventeen state champ. Thank everybody for coming out.